So since near enough the beginning, I have been attempting to cultivate algae in a variety of containers with a variety of different strains to varying successes. Although despite being able to get the algae to grow, my culture has always ended up looking something like this. Whether it be spirulina, which is what I started with, or chlorella, which I have recently switched to. Time and time again, I have neglected my culture and it has died. However, this time, I thought to myself, I really want to get serious about algae cultivation and trying to turn algae into third generation biofuels. And so, for this installment of doing it ourselves, I have decided to showcase the process I took in starting my new chlorella culture, including all the steps of the process and some hurdles I stumbled upon along the way. So without further ado, let's get into it. So firstly, I thought we'd talk about some of the issues I had previously in cultivating algae. Obviously, I said in the beginning that I repeatedly neglected the culture and it died. And in general, I didn't really know what I was doing, but I've done a little bit of research and I found a few areas where I could improve. Something I personally observed, firstly, is that my solution for aeration and agitation was inadequate for the size of my culture. It worked well back in 2022 when I first started and I was using tall uh, pop bottles or soda bottles if you're American. Now that I'm using a, what's essentially a clear polypropylene tub, it's, it's a different shape and is a lot larger. The little pump I was using wasn't passing enough air through into the culture, it wasn't bubbling enough air. And so what that meant was that the air supply for the algae was limited and the, it wasn't agitating the culture enough in order to circulate the algae around the medium. The second issue, and this is something kind of weird that I didn't notice at first, or I didn't know what was happening. So off camera, when I've been disposing my dead cultures, sometimes what I've done is I've tested the pH and it turns out these dead cultures are extremely basic. They're, they're very alkaline. And this is something I didn't pay enough attention to. When you start out your algae culture, you'll tend to have quite a neutral pH. And as the algae absorb nutrients and release things like ammonia into the system, what tends to happen is that the alkalinity will increase. You see, what tends to happen if you let the culture get too basic is you'll have something called cell lysis where the cells will start to rupture and release certain chemicals called carotenoids which give a dead culture its orange hue but also serve as an indicator that something has gone wrong. And so something I'm going to take into account here on out is to periodically check the pH and adjust it accordingly with something like citric acid or something like that, a, a mild acid that can act as a regulator so that the pH doesn't get too high for the medium to be hospitable to the chlorella. Yet another thing is fertilization. Something I forgot to do in my previous attempts is to repeatedly fertilize the algae. Turns out, for as long as you keep fertilizing, the algae will rapidly undergo cell division and will go undergo exponential growth as long as it has the essential nutrients of nitrogen, phosphorus, all that kind of stuff that's in fertilizer, whether it be natural fertilizers or inorganic ones. For chlorella in particular, what tends to happen when you stop fertilizing, when you stop adding things like nitrogen, and, well, particularly nitrogen and phos phosphorus as well, the algae will stop growing, but it will start accumulating lipids. The cells will grow in mass, but they won't divide and multiply. 
And this is actually really good for things like biodiesel production because you want to maximize your lipid yield as much as possible. However, if you want to continue growing, that's not very useful. And you kind of want to accumulate lipids at the end of the growth cycle. And I will talk about that in a little bit more detail in another video. But to sum it up, what I've learned is that if you want to keep up that exponential growth, you need to keep fertilizing the medium, which will continuously provide nutrients for the algae. So now that I've addressed those issues, let's take a dive into how I got this started. So firstly, after cleaning out the old junk and wiping it down, I had a clean container. Although I wanted to be extra cautious. So one of the first things I did was actually shine a UV torch onto the lid and inside of the container in order to make sure that any microbes or anything that wasn't algae was basically destroyed or killed so that nothing could contaminate the culture medium. Secondly, what I did was I did a bit of patchwork on the lid of my tub. I made a large hole in the center and I patched up the rest of the lid with some hot glue as there was a great big crack in it and I was ready to continue to the next step. Next was my agitation and aeration solution. Initially, I, in theory, designed a system that would provide rotation inside the culture as well as aeration. Something that I come up with was to have a two-part system where one part holds a bearing and is connected to a hose and the other part serves as both the tube for the air to flow and as the rotor and the idea was that the air would flow downwards into the rotor and it would come out of the two ends and you would get rotation as well as providing air to the culture. And that sounds all nice in theory, except you'll understand in a while why that didn't work. But anyway, what I did was I printed the objects in blue PLA, I cleaned up some bearings in isopropyl alcohol before lubing them up with some super lube thinned out with some WD-40. I inserted the bearing into its housing, which would also be the air inlet I attached to this assembly to the lid of my culture using some nuts and bolts and some hot glue. And after that, I attached the rotor to the inner part of the bearing and I tested it out and it didn't work. And for a glaring reason that I overlooked. Basically because I was running the bearing with no caps and you kind of need to in order to get low friction, the air wasn't even getting anywhere near the bottom of the tube that I had printed. And that meant that I had to switch to another solution. And so what I came up with was instead of having a rotor try to create a vortex in the culture in order to circulate the water around, what I instead came up with is this design. And what this does, at least in theory, is instead of having a rotor mechanically rotate the culture around in order to create circulation. The idea here is that you have three outlets that all have air pushed out of them. And what this means is that you create a propulsive force that basically creates a sort of localized current at each outlet. And in aggregate, what that means is that you get a generalized uh, circulation of the culture. So instead of having a hard rotational force that churns the culture around, what we're instead doing is utilizing fluid dynamics to create a current that will provide circulation as well as aeration. And so after printing the model, I decided to give it a bit of a blow test and it seemed to work. So I tried it with my pump and the pump I had 
just wasn't working. It just wasn't providing enough pressure to push the air through the tube and out of the three outlets. I quickly found out why. You see, when I took a look under my air pump, I quickly noticed that it was pretty weak with only providing a air volume of up to 1.8 liters per minute to a body of water. And I clearly needed something more powerful than that. So I ordered some cheap tat off of Amazon. It's shaped like a shark, but that's kind of an aesthetic detail. The important thing is that it's an air pump that can provide up to seven liters per minute of airflow, which is a lot more than 1.8 liters. So I pulled the trigger on the purchase and the next day it arrived. What I did next was I unboxed it all and gave it a quick test by connecting one of the lines to a tube and seeing if it pushed air. And when I turned it on, I was pleasantly surprised. Unlike my previous air pump, I could actually feel the air pushing against my hand, even when the tube was several inches away. And this was a good sign. What I then did was took this same line and connected it to my 3D printed aerator and tested it inside the culture medium. And it worked a lot better than previously. So now I knew that 3.5 liters per minute was enough, I decided to crank things up a notch and go for the full seven. So what I did was I cut up some tubing and used the included adapters in order to feed both nozzles into one line that I connected to my 3D printed aerator. And this was much more powerful. And I knew this was going to provide adequate aeration and agitation to my culture. So after testing, I set everything up by feeding the tube through my lid and connecting it back up to the aerator with the included check valve, which conveniently slotted quite snugly into the top hole. And then it was time to move on to the next step, which was measuring out my fertilizer. I decided to go a bit conservative here and use 15 grams thereabouts of fertilizer because I wasn't sure how much chlorella really needed and I wanted to play it safe and avoid over fertilizing the algae and potentially stressing it out. So I weighed out 15 grams of fertilizer and dumped it into the culture and allowed the culture medium to agitate for a couple of hours. Whilst I did this, I got my culture out of the fridge and allowed it to sit for a while in order to acclimate to the surrounding environment and more importantly, acclimate to ambient temperature, which was around the same temperature as the culture medium. If I was to introduce a starter culture cold, what would happen is it would cause stress in the algae and potentially kill it due to the temperature difference. I waited a little while before picking it up to try and see if it was ready, but it was still a little cold. So I had to be a bit more patient. When I was finally ready, I began dispersing my starter culture into its culture medium after adding the fertilizer. I closed everything up, turned on the pump, and turned on my LED lighting. And that was pretty much the end of the process. Now, if you attempt to do this yourself, obviously you'll have different circumstances. You'll use different fertilizers, different containers, and so on and so forth. But if you're growing similar types of algae, like chlorella or spirulina, and similar species, the process should be relatively similar. In my next video, I'm going to be delving deeper into my next product, which is the algae to fuel process. And I'm also going to be going over some of the different growth stages of chlorella and why they're important. If you like what you saw here and want to see more, then why not subscribe and click the notification bell. And let me know what you think down below in the comments. Once again, thank you very much for watching. Take care and I will see you next time.